range. Uh, 17,753 is where we are trading at. Uh, now, uh, the credit card data for the month of March for the industry as such looks very good. HDFC Bank uh, also reported a very good uh, growth uh, uh, in terms of uh, credit card spends, credit card issuance for the month of uh, March. Uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, Parag uh, Rao, Group Head, Payments Business, Consumer Finance, Digital Banking and Information Technology at the bank joining us, at HDFC Bank joining us uh, to take this conversation forward. Uh, Parag, great to have you with us here uh, on the program. Thanks Good very morning. much for your time. Uh, Prashant, this side. Uh, you know, overall numbers are pretty solid. Uh, there is no doubt about that. But I just want to start with uh, what is happening at HDFC Bank and uh, market share, uh, really. Mm -hmm. uh, if we mm -hmm. look at the uh, cards in force, right, uh, data, the market share of HDFC Bank has actually dropped quite a bit over the last one year. March of 2022, that number was 22.5%. Uh, at the end of March of 23, we are at 20.6% or so. Even with these numbers, you are by far the leader in terms of the uh, CIF number. Can you tell us uh, how are you looking at uh, market share trends? How is it evolving? And what are you doing okay. to regain uh, the sh uh, your share here? Okay. So l let me briefly answer that. Uh, credit cards is what we call a portfolio game. It's about engaging customers and getting the maximized spends onto the card. HGFC Bank, we've always focused on deep engagement of customers with the card, and hence you see our spend market share, or the value market share, as you call, has consistently uh, grown uh, over the last two to three years, notwithstanding the environmental changes which have happened. Uh, numbers, uh, so, 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 so to answer your question, how does that lead into? Numbers are a funnel. We use that as an acquisition tool. Okay, and those numbers can keep on coming down, but it's the expertise in which uh, of portfolio management which actually drives a lot of your value market share, which determines your profitability. Having said this, I think we've had a good run in terms of uh, number growth uh, uh, over the last two to three years. Uh, we have a lot of aggressive plans of growing up uh, the number market share too. Uh, announcements like the UPI linkage of Rupee credit card onto um, onto the UPI platform, I think are very welcome uh, changes in the ecosystem. Uh, this one particular change as we see is going to expand the opportunity to source credit cards in millions and millions of people who are electronically savvy on the UPI platform. So we see a good growth in the numbers thing and, and I think you need to just keep and watch. Having said this, our focus will continue to remain on a deep, strong uh, engagement with the customer to ensure that higher wallet share happens on our card and therefore you could continue seeing our value market share uh, growing. Mm. All right. Hi, Mr. Rao. Morning. Thanks so much for speaking to us. So you believe that your market share will grow. This is Nigel on this side. Uh, you want to put a number yes. to that? I think as per spends, uh, what, the number that we have, I think, is between 27 to 28 uh, percent. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so do you see that number headed up from year on? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're, yeah. we're just shy of the one third mark and that's our first milestone. We're trying to get to one-third the market share, and then the, from there on, we keep on going. Three years? Pardon? In the next two years or so, that should be the target, 2025? You get to a third, or do uh, you want to do it sooner? Difficult to put a time frame. We'll be difficult to, we'll try to do, do it, obviously, sooner. But that's the objective. All right. You know, particularly with the credit card business, one school of thought is this UPI payments has been a disruptor. But a bullish mm -hmm. argument would be that they both can work uh, together and, you know, there's plenty of headroom out there. I wanted your comment on this. Yes, I absolutely agree with that, with, with that uh, you, know, you know, view and the school of thought. Um, payments, payments industry penetration is still pretty low. Uh, prior to UPI, we were, what, probably less than 10 percent, even including UPI. I think we're just about touching, crossing the 15 to 20 percent penetration mark. Okay, so, so any new alternate form, and UPI in this case, has really become a disruptor in that sense by expanding the marketplace. So it's only going to help. And, and it's evidenced by the numbers. If you see all factor, form factors, which you see the credit, the debit, UPI, net banking, wallets, etc. You see all of them growing. There is there a relative growth between each one of them? And, you know, there's a little bit of cannibalization happening. But I think the entrance of UPI has expanded the marketplace. Uh, what do I see happening over the next three to four years? Uh, I, I talked about this disruptive initiative of UPI, which sort of opens up the market for uh, a huge number of credit cards over the next three to four years. That's what I see happening. So you've got a huge set of 
for lakhs and lakhs of customers who today conduct billions of billions of transactions every month on UPI. Uh, these are electronic, uh, these savvy customers. They understand payment systems, and the, the, this is the funnel for tomorrow's credit card business. So, 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 so over the next two to three years, as I see it. The market will continue expanding. Penetration of electronic payments into what we call personal consumption expenditure is going to grow. Uh, you're going to see that effect across all form factors. Um, and you'll also see credit cards growing in a symbiotic manner along with UPI, uh, especially with this disruption. So we're bullish on the growth prospects in the Indian market. Hmm. Parag, uh, you know, a few years ago, the payment space, uh, the fintech payment space in a way was uh, the wild, wild west. Uh, there was, mm -hmm. and it grew rapidly, right? <laughs> Over the last yes. couple of years, though, uh, we've seen regulations, in a way, catch up with the explosive growth in the space. And that has also resulted in, you know, many uh, fintech founders, etc., at least privately complaining that it is uh, crimping growth and growth rates, etc. We've seen lots of uh, regulations on, you know, for example, prepaid instruments it's, uh, and, and uh, things like that. What is, yeah. your, what is your view? Is it, uh, you know, is, is the regulation there helping the traditional sort of uh, older players to uh, catch up uh, to the new realities of the marketplace on the payment okay. side? Okay. Well, I'm of the school of thought, and I'm sure a lot of people ascribe to that thought, that financial services needs to grow rapidly, hand-in-hand uh, -hand with innovation. Okay. And I think it's a fine balance. So, so, so and, and I, I think in the last two to three years, uh, the fact that you mentioned that there's a lot of innovation happening at the same time. There are, if you make also corrections, um, guidelines, regulations coming in. Uh, I think that's good for the industry. Uh, what's the role of the regulator? The role of the regulator is to ensure that in the financial service place, there are good practices, there are transparent practices. Um, products are available in a democratic manner mm. to anyone and everyone who applies. Um, reasonable charges, so on and so forth. Simultaneously, when you couple that with the innovation, and innovation, you've seen uh, UPI's innovation. Prior to UPI growth, the, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, the wallets uh, was an innovation into the, I think, six, seven years back. Tap and pay, uh, QR code. These are new innovations which uh, which have happened in the Indian market. They've only expanded uh, the growth. So it's my view, you need innovation, you need regulation, uh, healthy regulation, and I think it's a balance. And that's going to take the, uh, you know, the market forward. Uh, yeah, you can always debate, can we grow faster? Uh, but I think it's more prudent to really, uh, you know, balance off these two and grow. Because ultimately, it's the customer's trust immunity to win, uh, especially when it comes to financial services. Uh, on, the, on the credit cost side, uh, on the uh, credit card side, uh, things are well under control, uh, Parag? I think so, yeah, definitely. I think you can clearly see trends. Uh, in the ecosystem, credit costs dropping. Uh, most institutions have passed the hump, as, you know, when it came to the pandemic and the restructuring mm. thing. And, and and as you see, spends growing and the numbers growing. You see, uh, the books also starting to grow. So credit costs clearly are going down, uh, and I think that's good for uh, all institutions and profitability. All right, Parag, we leave it there. Thank you very much. Good speaking with you. Appreciate you joining in and uh, Thank running you. us through. Uh, what you're making in the payment space, uh, credit cards, bulk of the conversation uh, today. Well, let's shift.